Good morning and welcome to Ask the Expert. I'm Joe Taylor. This morning, another in the ongoing series of programs presented by the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning. The program, through the Northwest Institute of Research, oversees a grant from the Office of Child Development and Early Learning at the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services and the Department of Education. The goal of the program is to improve the outcomes for young children as they prepare for school. John Polza from the Pennsylvania Key is the host of the program and is with us throughout the series. And John, I see this morning, see, I can still, I can still make observations. I can <laughs> see that we actually have someone in the studio. Yes, we do, Joe. I'm so pleased to welcome Brenda Gaffey from the Guidance Center uh, here in Dubois. And, and uh, Brenda oversees the Parents as Teachers program for the Guidance Center. And, uh, you know, we wanted to bring her in this morning to talk about the program because I think it's it's one of those research-based, uh, really proven program that, that uh, Ockdell and PA Key is very, very fond of, and, and we thought it, we really needed to have a program on it, so wanted to bring Brenda in. So welcome to the program, Brenda. Thank you. Okay, so for folks and our listeners who may not be familiar with parents as teachers, um, like we always say, a child's first and most important teacher That's right. is their parent. So with that philosophy in mind, tell us about what Parents as Teachers is all about. So Parents as Teachers, um, that's kind of like our catchphrase is the one that you right. just gave. Yeah. Um, and um, what we do is, what we like to do is we like to partner with any families that are interested in learning about um, that early childhood development uh, and giving them information on kind of where their child is developmentally and what the next steps would then be. So we do in-home visits and we partner with those families to um, increase their knowledge in that area. But I think sometimes the key difference is, is that it really is a partnership between um, the parent and like a home visitor who's coming in. And we can ask them questions such as, you know, like, so um, where, what do you see your child being good at? What do you feel like they need to maybe, you know, get a little beef up on or, you right. know, um, do a little better in? And we can kind of get their input as well as give them that knowledge of where they should be at, at, you know, what are t typical two-year-olds doing? Should they be um, able to just bead or is that too hard for them? You know, right. lacing beads. And yeah. so, you know, some parents, they have different expectations. And so clarifying for them, really, what are the expectations? Is, is that too hard or not? Um, so it, it's, it's, it's very conversational. It's very much a partnership between the two so that there's a give um, back and forth of information. Um, and it's so that it would be something that's very interesting to the parent about what their child is doing now. Um, and the other thing that um, Parents as Teachers does is we do want to make the parent feel like they are the expert in teaching their child. So it would, if I were a home visitor coming into, let's say, your home and working with your child, I wouldn't be trying to come in and do all of like the activities and things that we bring and right. lead everything and, and um, uh, just take over and be there for an hour educating your child. Um, it really is about coming in and um, seeing what the parent's comfortable doing too. So here's some, let's just start with blocks per se, and um, let's just play and see what you're doing. And, you know, then we really meet them at what they're already doing, praise what their strengths are, and then hopefully answer some questions about, um, you know, how to incorporate maybe some education into that by like labeling colors or something um, in that regard. And then um, also then saying to the parents, so this is some things that I've noticed that maybe you can do to increase the quality of the interaction. Right. Um, and we obviously have many tools that will help us with those type of things, you know, sure. screens of the kids, things like that. So. Sure. So j just so folks know then, so when, when you or whomever comes and, and mm -hmm. pays a visit for the first time with that family, um, and you have a conversation, mm -hmm. very low key, um, some questions, challenges, um, and, and observations that are mm -hmm. done with the parent and the, and the child. Do you then set up a schedule for you? You provide some, um, you know, some helpful tips, things to work on with their children, and then do you come back 
-hmm. after a certain period of time? And do you yeah. have like a regular schedule of visits? Yeah. So I guess just to back up a little bit, in case you're not so familiar with parents as teachers is, is that it is an in-home visiting program. We um, come into the home, work with both the parent and the child, and the visits last for about an hour when we're there. And then we schedule them based on how much the parent is kind of requesting from the program. So I could come back in the following week and we can have weekly visits that last about an hour, or we can come back every other week and um, have visits then that last an hour. Or for some families, they just like to learn about the development of the child. And we might even only have monthly visits right. because maybe the baby is a six, you know, is six months old and they just want to learn what they're supposed to be doing next. And so we provide some information, suggest some activities that they could do to play with their child to get them to roll over or right. you know something like that and then they'll do those things while we're gone and then we can come back and talk about you know what went well what okay. maybe didn't go so well how do you select the uh, the parents and the families that you'll be uh, working with and is uh, i guess my assumption would be that these might be families where there is a, an at risk uh, possibility um, at times, there may be some families that um, are at risk and have um, they've been referred to us from other programs um, in the area, such as early intervention or somewhere. But overall, we hope that they're selecting us and we're not selecting them, I guess is a good way to say mm -hmm. it. Um, we are what is termed a universal program. And um, what we mean by that is that for right, right now, we have a grant that serves all of Jefferson County. So if you live in Jefferson County, the only requirement to get parents as teacher services is that you live in Jefferson County. There's not a monetary requirement. Your child does not have to have a delay. Um, it doesn't have to be that, you know, they're struggling with anything. It really can just be that they, they're curious about their child's development. They want to know what will help them get ready for kindergarten so that they have the best start possible. Um, and I, I think that sometimes that's where we um, can serve a lot of families that maybe some other programs cannot because we don't have those type of qualifications. So um, the families that we serve can range from, you know, some stay-at-home moms that have chosen to stay at home and, and do, do not want to maybe send their child out to um, a, a child care facility or a preschool facility, and so they're requesting the information so that they're – Right. as aware of what that development is as the preschool teacher is. Right, exactly. Um, and But we also have some um, working parents that both parents work and their child maybe is, um, you know, uh, is uh, watched by grandma or maybe they do go to um, a daycare a couple days a week. But the parents want to increase their interactions and with that limited amount of time they have because they come home from work at 5, the children go to bed at 8, they have three hours of time. And they want to make sure that the three hours that they give them is quality, great interactions that really support their attachment with their child because they don't have all day to do that attachment. Um, and they also want to make sure that they're, you know, giving them the skills they need as, you know, and they're getting that everywhere. Right. And they want it to be from them. Exactly. You know, they exactly. want to have a say in it. Yeah. And so sometimes, you know, we'll go into those homes and work with those families um, just to increase their knowledge in that. Um, I had a mom once sum it up. She was a lawyer, and she said, she said, I'm a great litigator, and I, I do really well as a lawyer because that's what I went to school for. Yeah. She said, but if you ask me what a three-year-old's supposed to do, I don't know. <laughs> so it's... to me, that was like eye-opening and kind of funny. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But it's, the, it's as everyone says, it's the hardest job in the world that we have absolutely no training for. And they don't come a, with directions. No directions. <laughs> right, no exactly. directions. Absolutely. And you know, and the, and the point, as you were saying, is whether whether you're a parent that decides to enroll your child in child care, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's at a center, whether it's mm -hmm. a, with a family or group provider, mm -hmm. or whether you, you know, you you don't feel or you're not comfortable at that given moment, and you want to really develop that bonding experience. It doesn't matter one way or the other. The fact is, every parent needs that um, kind of advice yeah. uh, from 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 someone to to, to know what the, the the real milestone should be, huh. whether their child is developing properly or not. So yeah. that's why I think the program is so great. I, I would imagine also that parents are doing some things right, 
And yeah. it's great to get that positive oh, feedback absolutely. that, exactly. hey, yeah, you're, you're doing it right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I, I always say, you know, like sometimes it's just that affirmation of how great a job you really are doing. Um, but we, we in the curriculum that we have through Parents as Teachers, which is actually an international program right. and curriculum, uh, there are so many fun activities that just use the things that are already in the home. Um, such as like um, we do paper bag roads all the time and so we just tell the parents to save some you know uh, uh, paper bags or you know some just paper in general and so we'll put some paper together and the children draw roads and then we come up with these little cars and we drive all over and we talk about the community they live in and all of that kind of things and so we use things that are already in their home that's easy um, and, and then we'll use like cereal boxes for tunnels or oatmeal containers for tunnels or things right. like that. And so it's just fun things that we can um, show them that they can use what's already there to be fun yet a learning experience. Um, and so for many of the families, that's like something that they, they, they don't have to think about it. You know, they're not going like, what can we do for them now to teach them their numbers? Yeah. You know? And children, just like adults, don't like to be asked a lot of questions. So saying, what's this number? What's this number? Or how many is that? How many is that? Children will get frustrated and then they won't want to learn. But if you're playing a game and counting their favorite cards, every child wants to do that. You know, and yeah. so when we're kind of giving that to the parents, we're giving them those activities that we've said kind of work with that age. And so they don't have to think about it. So it's real fun for them. You know, they get to enjoy an activity that their child is very interested in doing, is age appropriate, is educational, and they didn't have to think about it. Absolutely. So it's a busy life out there. Oh. And, and, you know, getting those activity pages or getting that is just sometimes really all that they really want. And there's a good, like you said, a tap on the back affirmation that, oh, I'm doing this right. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, this is what we've been doing. You know, And, and right. it's such a pressure. <laughs> I remember from, from my two daughters, it's such a pressure because you want to be a good parent, mm -hmm. but boy, I don't know what I have to do. And mm -hmm. I like the idea of you just kind of integrate it into, and I see this all the time, uh, somebody going shopping mm -hmm. and they've got the little kid with them. And what's that? Corn. What's yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah. a learning experience but it's integrated into the flow of, of life without yes. a lot of pressure. Now I've got to teach this exactly. kid something. Right, yeah. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. One of the things, Brenda, you know, because when a lot of, a lot of parents, um, especially hearing about the program, parents as teachers, sometimes, and, and you can address this, they may feel like there's a stigma. Oh, well, if I contact parents as teachers, I don't want people to think that I'm doing so because you know, I may be a bad teacher, that this is a program that's only, or not a bad teacher, but a bad, bad parent, parent yeah. that this is only for parents that really are struggling and are having mm -hmm. problems. You know, can you address that? Because that happens in so many fantastic programs that parents who don't want to kind of uh, mm -hmm. admit that they maybe mm -hmm. need a little bit of help or assistance. Well, like I said, I, I, I think we're all vulnerable in, um, the way we feel that we don't always want to admit that maybe we we do want a little bit of support but i think the thing um, that i would stress with any parents that may be thinking that is that it's not about what you're not doing it's about what you're already doing and how to build on that right every parent that we've been into i, I into their homes it doesn't matter their background their experience where they were referred from whether they have a child that maybe does have a speech delay or is struggling with something those parents are doing something right good they're building relationship with their child and they're you know like they're they're um helping them reach milestones that they don't even realize that they're doing right exactly. um so i think you know for those it's it's just like a reinforcement yeah, yeah. trying yeah. to find a way to just reinforce for them that um these are already great things you're doing and so this is something you're comfortable playing or doing, so let's build on that. And we actually have a tool, it's called, um, it's called the Piccolo, which is a parent-child interaction tool, where we can observe, let's say I was watching you play with your child, I would mm -hmm. watch you for 10 minutes and make some notes and then fill out this form. Right. And what the Piccolo then helps us do is see what your natural parent-child interactions are. Right. So it helps us visualize where your strengths are. Because in a 10-minute period, you're going to do the things that are the most natural to you. Right. You're going to interact in a way that's comfortable for you. You're not trying to do something different. Yeah. And so if we can get you in that relaxed environment and look at that, then we can kind of go over them and say, look, these are all the things that you're already doing naturally, and you're doing it well. 
So if we want to increase those interactions between you and your child and help you build maybe their education or learn new concepts, then here's some things that we can do. So I didn't see you do this, this, and this, but I can show you what that looks like. I can model that for you and show you that so that you can try it out. Maybe you'll get comfortable with it. Right. You know, because sometimes we just don't have never thought of doing it that way because we haven't experienced that way. Right. I, I, I wish I was I, gonna say I wish I had parents as teachers. <laughs> <laughs> When I was, uh, well, when I was, uh, you know, raising my son, but, yeah. uh, you know. It's it's really designed to just, like you said, be that support wherever you are. Yeah. Wherever you are in your interactions and your ability levels, um, we always have a book. We always have something fun that the kids can 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 make or do um, during, during the visit. You know, we make homemade Play-Doh. We make homemade slime. We make, and the kids get to keep it. And, you know, yeah. and then we talk about, you know, what you just did was all pre-math right exactly and, and pre-science mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it was so much fun right you know and he doesn't care that that's what it was but he learned it he learned it i, yeah. I would you imagine know? you'd have to take great care in selecting your instructors mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they have to be empathetic they, yes. they can't be going in there uh appearing to be you know a know-it-all to yeah. the, the, the the new mom or, or the we mom don't know it all so, <laughs> so what what is the what, what kind of people do you uh, attract, employ as instructors, and what kind of training do they receive? So the Guidance Center really tries to um, um, hire individuals for our Parents as Teachers program that have a four-year degree, um, either in um, early childhood education, elementary education, health and family studies could be one, um, it's like the psychology um, social work. Mm -hmm. you know degree and actually nurses as well nurses obviously are you know very compassionate and caring right. um so those are the ones that we you know as far as the education um, we really try to get those ones with those four-year degrees in those areas if they don't have a four-year degree but they do have um you know an associate degree in those areas we would also accept them if they've had a lot of experience maybe in the in the child in a child care setting or um, a preschool or if had experience with young children mm -hmm. um, and again you know um, I think it, it's it you know that's where we start with trying to get them and then hopefully through the interview process seeing their interest in things we can kind of gauge you know that that compassion level and that you have to have that right um, I guess fire in your belly for going out and doing this right. and also um, being comfortable in other people's homes you know we sometimes take for granted um, you know that because we've been educated with a four-year degree in elementary ed or in early childhood or nursing that you know that that covers it we're qualified we can do this but we have to be comfortable going into a variety of homes mm -hmm. in the community and um, uh, you know uh, having a relationship with a variety of parents absolutely um, and personalities so it, it is definitely something that it's not a fit for everyone to be a home visitor and um, you know, we've been somewhat successful with being, you know, not that we don't have some turnover here or there because people find that it's really not a fit for them. But, um, you know, here in Jefferson County, we've been doing pretty, pretty good with that. I have um, several um, home visitors that have been with us longer than three years. You know, I've been working as a home visitor. I hate to say this out loud because it makes, <laughs> dates me a little bit. But, um, you know, I was a preschool teacher. I was a um, child care director. And then I uh, started doing home visiting with the Guidance Center's Parents as Teachers program in Elk County when it was in Elk. And um, that was in 2000. So I'm working on my 18th year <laughs> <laughs> with the Guidance Center doing home visiting. And I'm definitely one of those people that have that fire for it. I, yeah. I, li I love doing this because um, when I went to school to be an educator, it really was you were educating a child. And I thought that what more important thing could you do to give them a, such a good start? But then when we introduced the parents into that mix and I realized, oh my goodness, we can go in and share information with a parent, make them feel confident in how they work with their child. And they're gonna do it, I'm gonna be there one day, but right. they're going to be interacting with their child every day for hours on end. And if I can give them a little bit more than they had before I walked in the door, 
then their child's getting that much more and wow what an impact we're making absolutely you know so um, I'm definitely one of those people and you know you, you just have to look to find who's who's on board for that right and right. who's comfortable in the homes right. Uh, for those just uh, joining us, we're talking with Brenda Gaffey from the Guidance Center on the Parents as Teachers program. And uh, so folks know, um, Parents as Teachers is actually a program that's provided, well, it's, as you said, internationally, nationally, mm -hmm. throughout the state of Pennsylvania. There are programs pretty much in, in every community throughout the state. Um, you, can, you can go on the Parents as Teachers, Google it and mm -hmm. you'll find a list of those locations where the program is offered. So if you, mm -hmm. depending upon where you live, it'll mm -hmm. give you the contact name of the organization that provides it. Correct. And Brenda was gonna give us a little hint yeah. about the fact that Clearfield County um, could yeah. very well soon be having this program. Exactly. So, yeah. Right now through the Guidance Center, we do serve all of Jefferson County and um, we've applied for a grant that will um, enable us to serve all of Clearfield County um, with families uh, that live there and um, they've given us a notice that we've we've pretty much been chosen it's just um, we have to finalize some budget things and that so we haven't got that final stamp that says we can start enrolling families or do anything like that but it's very positive we're we're pretty sure we'll be able to do that and we'll really start being able to enroll families maybe even by May um, so hopefully we'll have that final stamp of approval and start moving into the Clearfield area. So, If someone in Jefferson County is listening mm -hmm. and would like to uh, avail you uh, mm -hmm. of your services, how would they go about it? How do they contact you? So the easiest way possible is just to call our office. Um, and um, our phone number is, uh, well, area code 814 and then 371 -0613. And you can just ask for the Parents as Teachers program, or you can ask for myself, Brenda Gaffey, and um, because I do all of the intakes, I like to meet all the families, um, kind of see where what their interest is, and um, you know what they would like out of the program. Because then I can get a good feel for who would be a good match for them. That oh, um, that's great. That so you actually us. take care to match them we with try. an instructor. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, we that try. Makes sense. We do yeah. try to keep yeah. our girls in one area, but if I find that there's a family that I think would really benefit fit from a certain individual then we will make that happen um, right. so I like to go in and meet them all yeah you know and, and really see where they're at right um, and, and you know I, I have to ask this question because obviously it seems on the surface from for you know the program that parents as teachers is mainly primarily for parents with very young children like mm -hmm. prior to school age mm -hmm. so I guess the question would be someone has to be wondering out there can, what if I have a child and I'm having difficulty with a child and he is in school? Mm -hmm. Is it still a program that would be available? So parents yeah. as teachers is not really available okay. for those children who are in school, um, if they're already in kindergarten. Right. Um, so we work with families prenatally until they go to kindergarten. We can stay with a family that has a child in kindergarten for a couple of months just to help with that transition and make sure everything's going okay. Um, but uh, we don't really serve any families that you know they don't have those young children um, it's because it's an early learning program but um, through the guidance center there is big brothers big sisters and things like that that you know there's some other options right um, for things in the community but. so and for folks who don't know in the Dubois area the guidance center is located on Beaver Drive correct right. yep and uh, um, and they can contact uh, Brenda yep um, at the guidance center there if they want more information on parents as mm -hmm. teachers and that phone number again Three seven one zero six one three. Right, and if you don't live in Dubois but live somewhere else in the yep. listening area, just go to the Parents as Teachers website, and Google it, yep. and there'll be a whole listing yes. of uh, organizations that yep. provide the program in your community. But hopefully, coming soon to right. Clearfield. Including Absolutely, yep. Dubois. Absolutely. If you're, if you're yeah. in Jefferson or Clearfield, please give us a call. And if you just want to talk about the program, you can call, and I'll have a conversation with you about it too. Brenda, thanks so much for being for being sure. on the program. It was sure. a great thanks program. Thanks for having yeah. me. And that's our program for today. We'll be back in two weeks at this same time. In the meantime, you can go online to learn more at papromiseforchildren.com. For John Poza and the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning, I'm Joe Taylor. Thank you for listening and have a great day.